Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just uh, give it an, an extra two minutes um, for more people to come on. Thank you. Okay, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is the open mic session for the um, IGF 2020. I hope you all had a good rest after the um, many interesting discussions that we had over the past uh, 12 days last week. Uh, just a quick reminder that um, this meeting is being recorded. It's there is interpretation. I hope you all can see the um, interpretation button down below. Um, also that um, there's a transcript that you can follow. And of course, we are also broadcasting it. Thank you. Um, the order of events are as follows is that um, the chair, Henriette and I will just give, uh, make our introductions and then I'll just give a, just a quick summary um, from the secretariat, um, just about the statistics. And then we'll go over to the open mic where um, you can all make comments and, and um, we will explain to you what we're looking for, which is basically what worked well, what didn't work so well, and what do you think we should keep for next year and and something you think we should do differently or something completely new you think we should do um, for next year because what we're doing now is that we are, we're always in a continual improvement process. So um, please tell us, and we are very, very interested more in what do you think that we can um, do better, do and improve better, taking in con into consideration, of course, the um, resource constraints that um, e everybody has. So with that, um, let me just give the floor over to um, the chair of the MAG, Anuit Estoyson, just to say a few words. Please, Anuit. Um, thanks very much, Angatai. I hope my virtual background is working today. Um, just thank you very much to everyone for, for joining us today. But really what I want to do is to thank you for your participation in the IGF. 
it was very challenging to organize a virtual IGF. And it was in fact quite a and quite an intimidating task. And the mag certainly worked extremely hard and struggled with it. But I think for the mag, the priority was that this was not just an online event, but that it was an event that maximized the potential of the online medium for more inclusion. It's now up to you to tell us whether we succeeded or not. Um, but I really do want to thank um, 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 the MAG enormously, the Secretariat for, for, for doing a phenomenal uh, piece of work and the UN system for supporting it. But most of all yourselves, the people that organized sessions, that participated in sessions, because if you were not willing to, to meet the challenge with us, we, we would have not had a successful IGF. So looking forward to your critical and constructive, but please don't hold back um, feedback. Back to you, Shagatai. Uh, thank you very much, Anriet. And I second everything that Anriet has said. Thank you very much um, for the participants, for the MAG, uh, and for everybody in the UN system, and for our volunteers, and for the interpreters and the transcribers as well. Um, thank you. I think um, everything worked together very well, um, much, much, much better than um, expected. And um, we're quite happy with the results. And we're looking for, as um, Henriette says, ways of um, improving. So please don't hold back. We are interested in how we can push this uh, forward. Now, just before we start um, the open segment, I'll just give to you just um, some very quick statistics. Um, as you know, um, for the IGF participation, um, we had, um, as far as the stakeholder groups is concerned, 19%, I mean, um, the government took up 17%, um, intergovernmental organizations um, took up 9%, uh, civil society 40%, uh, technical community, 15%, and the private sector um, was um, 19%. I'm quite happy with these um, statistics. There was, um, I think we had a, a, a really big increase in um, the government, the um, intergovernmental organizations, as well as the private sector. Um, this is just just comparing with the other, um, um, the, the, the proportion of stakeholders that um, took part in the previous IGFs. Um, I don't know whether it's going to be the, it, it was because of the online um, aspect of it, or, uh, and there was no need to travel, but I think that was very good. And we, and we did hear those voices as far as I was concerned that um, we did have um, those voices. And if I shift over, um, so the total registered participants was um, 6,048. These aren't not the final figures as such, but these are the figures that we took over um, the weekend. And as you can see, you do have those figures, um, government uh, 1,069, intergovernmental organizations 570, civil society 2,444, technical community 933, and the private sector 1,132 people who registered. And um, they said that they were from the uh, private sector. And, um, these are registered participants, but also please do recall that you, you could also still uh, take part or listen in through our YouTube, um, UNTV, and um, Facebook um, ch channels as well without actually ha having um, to register. Thanks. Um, as far as the distribution of um, participants uh, participants um, went. Uh, as usual, I think um, most of the participants did come from WEOG, but we did have, as you can see, Brazil is a very strong um, presence as far as South America is concerned. In Africa, the highest uh, percentage did come from Nigeria, 
And then um, Europe, it was the UK, Germany, and Poland. Um, and I think that this is actually for obvious reasons, because next year is going to be um, <clears throat> in Poland. Um, and the darker the numbers, of course, is the, um, the darker the area of the map is where more participants came from. We do still have to do a lot of work, it seems, because, um, for instance, we did not have people coming from um, Tanzania for some reason, so that um, requires some research. Angola, um, and I think as well, while well, North Korea is was well, well, was one place, but I think that uh, I think that speaks for itself. And um, and let me just see if there's any other country that I want to mention um, as such. Not really. Uh, Djibouti, uh, we didn't have uh, people from there. So um, what we're going to do as the secretariat is that we're going to look at those numbers where there's very small numbers and where we think that the numbers can improve and where there's no numbers as well. Over the next year, we're going to tr try and just um, take a look at that and see how we can um, improve that level of participation coming from um, those areas, um, uh, so to speak. Um, sorry, I just found where the, um, the countries were. So yes, Djibouti, Guyana, Laos, um, Tanzania for some reason, and also um, the small island developing states. We didn't have all of them. I mean, we, we, we had quite a, a lot of them, but still I think um, more work can be done to see um, how we can get those people on because they're, they're, they are all on the internet. Um, another quick statistic, if we want to look at them, uh, we had a total of 295 events, uh, 235 were webinars and 60 sessions were um, the regular meetings. Uh, we had 20,929 connections to sessions. Um, so we just throw that, so that's individuals, um, going into sessions. So if one individual went into three sessions, that would be counted three times. We just put that there because um, this is also a figure that people um, use to benchmark um, the participation in their um, meetings. Uh, we had over 1 million minutes um, held or broadcast and um, using our our schedule where you had the ability to reach out to people who were in the same session. We had 250 networking emails um, launched from um, the schedule so that that is people trying to get into contact with another people with other people. So that's an indication that even though we were um, online, people still used the IGF to get in touch with new people and which is part of the reason why we do have um, the idea of trying to break down those barriers and get people co connected and talking um, to each other. Um, top events uh, according to uh, participation. So the top event, now these numbers are just using the Zoom statistics. Uh, we have not added on YouTube and um, the um, UNTV statistics and Facebook statistics. So the top event was the opening session, and this was together with the um, main session on environment. Unfortunately, we had them in, in one session, so we couldn't really separate them, um, but that was the top event. Uh, this was tied with the um, high level leaders track for environment and of course also the closing session, so we had um, the two uh, tied as well, and the third one which was tied so it was there were three tied for first place was the IGF 2020 main session on um, national and regional initiatives. 
Uh, and then, of course, we had the parliamentary roundtable, main session on trust um, was the next most popular. And then the networking breakout room, let's tour the IGF village. So that's an indication that the IGF village is a popular venue and people are um, actually interested in that. And then we had uh, the youth summit and main session on on data and um, and then the session that we had to honor um, uh, Miss Marilyn Cade's uh, passing. Uh, looking at the uh, UN UN TV statistics, um, you can see here that we had quite a high number of um, views uh coming from there the first thing is the um high level leaders track on security which had 1193 views and the second is the main session on trust uh 1155 followed by the parliamentary session so of course this is also quite interesting um data that we are looking at and the fourth is the, the dynamic coalition session um the the main session that we ha we had and i think those, those are very interesting um figures and just to show that of course the the, the dynamic coalitions as well are um very interesting um session types and um, that people are interested in um going from there i would just like to um just point people to the outputs. Now we have the outputs on our uh, um, IGF website. And if you go to the IGF website, I just wanted to start off there because uh, for some reason, some people uh, can't find them. But if you go to the bottom of the news and we will also put a link there in the main thing. And this link will be active until we switch the website over, which we're going to be switching it to focus on uh, 2021. We're going to switch that over at the beginning of um, January. Uh, so, sorry, let me just, um, yeah, IGF 2020 outputs right there. And waiting. And as I don't know if you can see it properly, but uh, you can go to the website and I do ask somebody from the secretary to please just put the link into the chat for everybody to see. So we have the outputs that are official outputs that are produced um, by the uh, UN Secretariat. And so uh, these are drafts. So the draft summary, the chair's uh, draft summary, and we have the draft messages on data, environment, inclusion, and trust. Um, we have the phase one summary report and also the parliamentary um, roundtable output document and the youth summit uh, draft messages. We also do have the um, UN press releases for those people who are interested in those and also the um, remarks by the President of the General Assembly and the UN Secretary General and of course the closing by uh, Mr Liu, the uh, UN DESA's um, Under Secretary General. Uh, <laughs> There's the social media links and the um, outputs from our intersessional work. Uh, another thing I just want to stress, and we're going to continue stressing this uh, throughout the year as well, is that we do do a lot of intersessional work. Uh, there were some comments during the um, meeting that the IGF shouldn't only be a a uh, one yearly event. Yes, it definitely should not be a one yearly event. And we do have quite a lot of intersessional work. This includes best practice forums, the dynamic coalitions, which you can find uh, the reports on this output page. And I also want to just to mention also, there's uh, quite a few MAG working groups, um, which are also very important. And these aren't just um, um, confined to MAG members, people who think that they have something to contribute can also join these um, MAG working groups. As you know, the one of one one of the underlying philosophies of the IGF is openness and inclusiveness. 
And then we also have um, participant outputs. Um, so that's um, key takeaways from the session reports and um, the voluntary commitments that we had as well. We, we also collected uh, those that we um, have identified and transcripts. Uh, from the 2020 transcript. So everything is there. YouTube videos, we, we also had quite a lot of um, inquiries to where can you find your videos. There's there's the YouTube um, IGF um, channel where you can find all the videos. And on Facebook, you can find um, the main session videos and also the um, high level session videos and that is also the same goes for the um, UNTV if you go to the UNTV website you can also um, find those and then there are um, also other outputs like for instance um, for the Geneva Internet um, platform which are produced by the Diplo Fund Foundation so they 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 have also done their version of um, daily reports, analyses, and um, session summaries as well. Um, so you can go to their website and see those. So those are quite um, interesting as well. But everything is here from the official to, um, uh, uh, let me call them allied outputs as well, um, are there. The final thing I would just like to mention is that there is the deadline of the 1st of December, which is the deadline for um, all the session reports. And this year, which is new, we have given a chance for the community to comment on session reports and also comment on any of the outputs that I just showed you on this page. Um, so you're, you're please, you're, you are welcome to go to that page. And if you want to say something, just send, send us an email um, to the IGF Secretariat and we will review your input. And because we do want um, the reports to also be a reflection of um, the com community and if you feel that we i don't know misrepresented something or we missed something um uh, please uh, let us know as far as the session reports for the session organizers are concerned if you have a comment on those please send it to the igf secretariat as well and we will look at it and we will share it with the session organizers as well so we will also give them a chance to um, to update their records or change it, um, depending on what that uh, comment is. We do hope to have the final outputs by the end. Well, I'll just say we will have it um, by the end of December, and then that's when we will start distributing it to our um, to the comic community, to our colleagues in, um, for instance, Council of Europe, um, OECD, and um, various UN also um, organizations. Um, such as um, UNESCO, uh, who, who are our, our, our partners as well. Um, so I think that's all I have to say. Let me just um, ask Henriette quickly if she has any comment so on this section. A couple of questions. Mm -hmm. There was a question in the chat. How do these participation statistics compare with previous face-to-face -face, um, IGFs? So that was one question. And there was also a further question on um, the links between national, regional, and youth IGF initiatives and the global IGF, um, whether those are, are strong and visible. Okay. Um, how do the statistics compare? From my reading, these statistics and the participation that we have had are very good compared to um, face-to-face -face, uh, statistics and we're not just as i said you look at the we've got the zoom statistics and then you also have to add on to the uh, win tv statistics and also youtube and um 
Facebook statistics. We do know and we, we are aware that, yes, there are in some instances, some people who do join the Zoom and also look at Facebook or also look at um, UNTV or YouTube. Um, we, we, are, we, we are aware of that um, and we do take that into consideration and we do note that like exactly like right now I am um, noting that. But of course, um, I think far more just listen to um one particular channel um to, to to see what's going on and to take part so i do think that participation wise we had a greater number of participants um from more countries um this year than we had when we just had the regular face-to-face -face meeting. So this underlines the value that even if we do have a face-to-face -face meeting, we, sh we should not neglect um, what we are doing with the online participants. We should uh, put as much resources as we can to involve and integrate the online participants into the face-to-face -face as well. Um, so that's the answer to the first question. And as far as the national and regional initiatives are concerned, um, <clears throat> I would, I think our communication with the national and regional initiatives is uh, very good. We do have a national and regional focal point, um, whom you all know, Anya. And um, she's also doing very great work uh, communicating with the national and regional initiatives. We do understand that the national and regional initiatives are independent initiatives, and we do work together with them. Um, they do not work for us, but we do work together with them. And But as far as I have observed and as far as I have seen, the collaboration, yes, it's, it's a collaboration. The collaboration that we have with them is very good and we hope to strengthen it as we go along. Thanks, Shangatai. I will just add to that, that I think in terms of the content of this year's IGF, the NRIs were more visible than ever before because they organized various sessions on particular topics as well as a main session. Um, so for me and from my perspective, I think we've really reached um, a benchmark in terms of NRI participation and that we just need to build on that. We never need to go back. So Shengatai, we have hands. I'm going to stop reading everything in the chat because we want to hear people. We have a hand from Yuta Kroll, then Vince Surf, and then Amir Hossein and others, please start add, and then Vout, but others, please start adding your hands. We will get to you. Yuta, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Andriat, for giving me the floor. And thank you to Cengatai for presenting these fantastic statistics for the virtual IGF this year. Jutta Kroll, I'm represented. Can you introduce yourself? <laughs> yes, I'm a MAC member in my third year, so now outgoing representing civil society, and I'm from Germany. Here I'm speaking also in my capacity as the co facilitator for the Dynamic Coalitions, uh, together with Markus Kummel. And I was very glad to see the fantastic statistics uh, for the, uh, not only the participation, but for the, uh, the audience on the YouTube channel for the DC's main session. Um, we have now 22 dynamic coalitions. Most of them have taken part in the preparation and the carrying out of the dynamic coalitions main session. Only those who have been just settled, just started their work, uh, have not been engaged. And uh, what I would like to underline is uh, a message from the debrief session of the Dynamic Coalition that we had uh, on Monday this week. Uh, I would like to underline how important the intersessional work of Dynamic Coalitions is. Uh, what we can see also in the messages that were produced in the main session that was collaboratively prepared by the Dynamic Coalitions uh, they have not only a good output of their work, but also a very good outreach into the various communities because dynamic coalitions are addressing such a broad range of issues related to internet governance. Uh, 
we we have suggested to produce a study on the work of the dynamic collisions that has been done so far during the last 15 years, but also with a future oriented perspective in regard of the IGF plus model where uh, dynamic collisions and those who are working within dynamic collisions see the important role that dynamic collisions can play. Uh, also, uh, with that dynamic growth of the number of dynamic collisions, we see how, how huge the potential is to pick up on new developments in regard of uh, internet governance. We see that also in uh, the, I do think it's the newest or the youngest dynamic collision that came up that is dealing with uh, iron, environmental issues and uh, data in regard of uh, environmental issues. So that is somehow an, uh, an offspring of the uh, environment track that we had for the first year at this year's IGF. And that is my plan that the word of the work of the dynamic collisions is as supported as the work of the national and regional initiatives. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, thanks for that, um, Jutta. Um, Shengata, I've noted the speaker's queue. I'll, I'll carry on sharing for a bit now, then you can take over. Next, we have Vint. Well, thank you very much. I was clicking the unmute button and I got this nasty message saying you're not allowed to unmute yourself. So thank you uh, for uh, opening up. I'm Vint Cerf. I'm Google's uh, chief internet evangelist and a longtime participant in the IGF. Um, first of all, uh, Chengatai and others in the Secretariat, I am so super impressed by the way in which you used uh, IT, especially the, uh, the, the Zoom mechanism. Uh, the, uh, the particular surprise for me was the uh, ability to deal with interpretation. Uh, I was uh, really immensely pleased to see that. Uh, but the other thing that impressed me was the way in which the online uh, system was organized so that we could find each other, we could message each other, we could sign up for sessions. Uh, it, this was a tour de force piece of good work. And I wondered um, whether that was all generated internally or whether uh, you had found somebody uh, in the world to go and build the system that we use, but it was tremendously useful. I just wonder if it's available for others who want to uh, organize uh, events that uh, would benefit from similar kinds of mechanisms. So that's one, uh, you know, one thing, you know, hats off, beautiful piece of work. Second, uh, Chengatai in particular, uh, I would urge you to make it known uh, what the support for the Secretariat, uh, what support is needed for the Secretariat, financially uh, especially, so that uh, we can have a target uh, to shoot for. Um, it, you know, I'm sure that it's always understaffed, but uh, whatever it was that uh, you were able to do, uh, <laughs> you carried off just an enormously successful event in an online uh, mode. Last point um, is that I, I'm, uh, I am skeptical of our ability to do as well with a mixed in-person and online um, activity because the people who are online uh, are less visible somehow and they, they often get neglected no matter how hard we try to uh, even things up. And so I'm almost tempted to say that we might do better sticking with this online environment where participation is so much easier uh, in not only avoiding travel, but also, you know, simply being able to engage. I hate to say that because I love to see everybody face to face. I think the cultural experience of being in different parts of the world is extremely important. But in terms of getting work done, uh, this was a bang up job. That's all I have to say, but thanks so much for letting me take the floor. Thanks a lot, Vint. And I mean, I can share with you that the MAG at the moment is thinking of a hybrid model of some kind. Um, but I think you really have a very legitimate point. Um, so yes, that will be taken. <laughs> into account. Shangatai, did you want to respond to Vint as well? Yes, uh, thank you very much, um, Vint. Uh, you, you've been very supportive of the IGF and the IGF Secretariat since inception, since 2006. So um, we, we really do appreciate that. And yes, as far as the um, setup was concerned and is concerned, the, the technical aspect, 
most of it is basically in-house and I would like to thank um, our um, technical person, uh, Louis Boba for that, for the schedule and stuff like that. And I'd also like to thank um, Serena as well, who did the landing page and um, those aspects. So the two of them really did um, great work um, on those two as aspects of um, the, the, the page. And n not just so that I will not forget other people, but I also like to thank other people in the Secretariat who, you know, for the text, for the writing, the consultants, Sam and Wim as well, and Danya, um, because, because it, it, it is a team that actually works on um, all those aspects of the website. And we are very happy to talk to anybody who's um, interested to see what we've done and how we've done it. Um, we can always have a Zoom call and just chat. Um, uh, this as well was um, very useful for us because we did have a talk with the ICANN um, technical group. We had a talk with ISOC. We had a talk with APNIC. We had a talk with um, APR IGF as well. And, and they told us um, how it worked and what didn't work so well and what we should avoid and what we should put more more resources to and what we can put less resources to. So I'd like to also thank all those people. And we offer the same to other people since we learn from each other. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Amir Hossein and then Vaut. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can now? hear you. You're a little bit faint, but we can hear you. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Hello, everyone. Especially distinguished panelists, uh, excellencies, and dear colleagues. Uh, first of all, I should thank IGF Secretariat of the MAG for. Uh, Amir, advising. Amir, remember to introduce yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I'm a Mukabri from Iranian academic community. Uh, I should thank IGF Secretariat the MAG for organizing uh, such a successful virtual IGF in this year. I would like to raise two very important issues uh, that is missing, I think, in this IGF and make one suggestion. Uh, first issue is digital sanctions against some nations. And second is the issue of uh, keeping internet as a peaceful and civilian environment. Uh, we need global cooperation, I think, on peaceful, development-oriented, and civilian cyberspace as an IGF initiator. Uh, we, the Iranians, uh, are not fighting in two fronts at the same time. One front is fighting with COVID-19 pandemic, and other is fighting with digital sanctions. As you all know, the effect, the effect of unilateral digital sanctions on some nations have become more intensive and more destructive, especially during COVID-19 pandemic and other emergencies when physical, you know, physical contacts are limited. Uh, the digital sanctions on investment in IT infrastructure, the digital uh, sanctions on digital technology, uh, digital resources like IT, Yenis system, and uh, sanctions on access to networks are key barriers in achieving national development goals using ICT and definitely uh, constitute human rights violations in uh, Iranian uh, uh, private sector digital entrepreneurs and some ICT projects are suffering from uh, primary and secondary sanctions in the digital domain. The question here is, uh, what the UN family and UN IGF community can and should do to address this vital issue. The second issue is that uh, we should keep civilian and peaceful nature of infants. It's very vital issue. And we shouldn't allow, we shouldn't allow uh, someone to come to the internet as a global city with their tanks and cyber weapons regarding this offensive victory. This force and uh, development-oriented nature of internet should be kept, and this should, uh, we all have duty in this regard. Uh, this will lead to 
is it leads to militarization of tiger states, internal fragmentation, and will undermine digital trust at global level. Uh, internet shouldn't be new battlefield. Uh, how could we put global digital economy on this unstable platform that have become a global battlefield? My suggestion are we need to establish the Committee of Peaceful Cyber Space in the United Nations to develop international treaty on data, governance, security, cyber crime, and so on. Based on that, we can establish ECOWLIFE organization for cyber. Uh, hello, uh, can you hear me? We are actually struggling Hello? to hear you. We are struggling to hear you. So I think you should type your comments in the chat. I think we caught a little uh, bit, but we really bad uh, to hear you. So, so please make it in writing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My suggestion are we need to establish the Committee of Peaceful Cyberspace in the United Nations and develop international treaty on data governance, uh, security and cybercrime and so on. Based on that, we can establish ICAO like organization for cyberspace. We need an organization like ICAO, International Civilian Aviation Organization, that cover all layer of internet, just like what we had, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and CUPUS for outer space. That sounds like a topic uh, for a session at the IGF. Um, so yeah. I think that's exactly, and, and just to, to, to give everyone, um, to remind yeah. everyone, today we are talking about the IGF. We're getting feedback on the 2020 IGF. But this suggestion yeah. that we've just heard coming from, from our colleague from Iran, um, suggestions yeah. for the content of the IGF, we will put yeah. out a call for input for the 2021 IGF. And then you will yeah. have an opportunity to make, again, this kind of, kind of recommendation for, for topics that you think should be discussed at the IGF. Um, so uh, I'm afraid I'm, we... I'm almost done. You... Could you please let me uh, tell my last word? I, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I, we need international civilian cyberspace organization under UN auspices, uh, ICCO, uh, to solve the accumulated problems of internet governance. We need digital United Nations Charter without veto especially for cyberspace. We need United Nations Digital Charter for promoting peace, achieving to just full development and protection of digital constitutional rights and responsible freedoms in balance with public interest, including public safety, security, and moral and ethics. We need also rules, norms, and responsible behavior on global digital platforms, as well as governance. We hope next IGF will pay attention to these important issues and suggestions. Many thanks for giving me this opportunity to raise this vital issue. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your participation and you were a very active participant. And I just put in the chat, I know it's not part of today's topic, but those recommendations and comments you made can also go into the open-ended working process at the UN um, where there's a working group that's looking at this. Next, we have Vout. Remember to keep your intervention short and introduce yourself. Um, yes, my name is Wout Natris and I'm a um, well, internet governance consultant from the Netherlands and current the coordinator of the Bremen Coalition on Internet Standards, Security and Safety. Um, I think the first word it has to be that it was really a wonderful job that I've been participating in in the past two weeks uh, in the IGF. So all the congratulations to everybody involved in making that happen. Um, concerning the, the comments made on the, the, the hybrid sort of the conference, I think that there are options to actually work on that. And that's something perhaps that, that could be looked into because now we had very active debates in the chat and, and then feeding into the session if the, core, the, the leadership of the session paid attention. And that is where things sometimes went wrong. There was a loaded panel and before anybody could comment, then the session was already over. 
And so that would be something to really look into. Because if there are six or 10 or even 12 people in a panel in 90 minutes, or sometimes even an hour, how can you ever have a debate or an on online participation? And that does, is not different from what happens in a room at the ITF. So if we want to keep the hybrid thing in the future, if we're lucky enough to go to Katowice the next year, then that will have to do with, with a really strong remote moderator and an on-site moderator that is willing to, to listen. So perhaps faces have to be on the screen, just like they are now in front of me, so that people are viewed and that makes them more equal as well. So, so in other words, there is where we have to, to think of. And next to, next to that, it's, it's on the session themselves. Perhaps the way that they are organized have to be looked at more seriously as, as well, because that would invite the online participation. To, uh, if, if from the outset it's clear, it's going to be hybrid and not just the room. Um, so where the next suggestion would be to improvement, I've already mentioned it before, but I will keep repeating it. But we've had so many sessions on the topic of COVID and, and and something with the internet. And basically they sort of discuss the same topic. So if we're looking for, for some sort of a tangible outcome, then that tangible outcome will have to become more focused on. Because if we next year, whatever the main topic will be, if we have 10 sessions on that, why not ask them what is your ideal outcome before they get a session? And if that aligns, it means that you will work towards answers to that ideal outcome. And then you accelerate the, the process, perhaps in the way of thinking or suggestions towards policy. And then the IGF will become a catalyst of that ideas and not just the same person speaking the same message in another session. So I think that is something to look at. Finally, one sentence. You've made the economist of last week as Internet Governance Forum, and I think that's only the second time I read it anywhere, and that was on the Biden administration, the need to come up with new forms of cooperation, and the Internet Governance Forum was mentioned as one of the organizations where that could actually happen. So perhaps that is something to keep a strong eye on, perhaps have that as a main session next year, international cooperation of some sort, and make sure that we sort of all administrations and organizations are invited to, to participate. And that will make sure that the visibility of the IGF will definitely rise in a very strong way. The fact that it's mentioned in the Economist is something to celebrate. So, thank you. contributions. I'm going to move quite quickly now because um, we have lots of people who want to contribute. Please don't um, keep your intervention to under a minute, everyone. Next, we have Siva. Yeah, uh, I take part in uh, the Dynamic Coalition on Core Internet Values, and uh, the Dynamic Coalition on Core Internet Values is a participant of the DC Coordination Group. I would like to add to the remarks by Yuta that uh, Dynamic Coalitions are a very, very important uh, constituent of uh, the IGF, and that uh, we contribute to the work of IGF plus. And it would be nice uh, to, if we can have a formal role at all levels in work concerning IGF plus, including the high level forum uh, that is convened by the secretary general from time to time. And this I'm stating more as a personal opinion. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Siva. Um, next, we have Sylvia. Thank you, Andriette. I, I hope you can hear me. 
Um, I'm Silvia Cadena. I, I work for the IPNIC Foundation. I'm an outgoing MAC member from the technical community, and I'm joining you tonight uh, from Brisbane, Australia. Uh, as an outgoing member of the MAC, I would like to commend the IGF Secretariat, UNDESA, and all the people that make the virtual IGF possible, and congratulate you, Red, for your incredible leadership, um, and without your commitment uh, to the multi-stakeholder approach, diversity in an action-oriented dialogue. I don't think we, ha we haven't uh, received so many positive comments uh, from people. So thank you, thank you very much. And I'm um, truly honored to have served on the MAC uh, uh, under your leadership. And I want to thank my colleagues on the MAC for their commitment and hard work. I'm really, truly going to miss the adrenaline. Um, there are many things to highlight uh, for this year. I would like to mention um, the crafting of the program across the themes of data, environment, inclusion, and trust, and the clear links between the thematic tracks in the main sessions the MAC members so carefully crafted and organized, and how useful the guide structure uh, this year was to navigate the themes and the sessions and the intersessional work, uh, th those connections, and, uh, and then a link to the outcomes that were also so carefully crafted and organized. In terms, I know that there is always room for improvement, uh, and I know that it's very possible that virtual meetings of, or some sort of hybrid, as it has been discussed, uh, may be on the cards. So I would like to uh, make three recommendations. Uh, to encourage the MAG to uh, consider mechanisms to strengthen the environmental track in all the intersessional work um, uh, linked to it. Uh, it was a new uh, track uh, with very uh, reduced number of sessions, but it is incredible that it was one of the, the most uh, well attended as per the statistics uh, Cheng Yitai, uh mentioned, and that shows the interest in the, from the community. And I think the IGF should continue to listen to the community through the um, consultation process and the validation of all four issues to select the theme, uh, the themes, the thematic tracks. Second point would be that um, if the need for a virtual IGF arises again, it would be really important to expand the hours covered to facilitate participation from the Asia Pacific region, and expand, which was almost neg neg negligible this year, and expand transcription and interpre interpretation services, including sign language, as the session organized by the DC on accessibility did, for example, as much as possible to facilitate access to information, as well to explore alternatives to have more speakers joining remotely through very strong remote participation channels that were strengthened from the lessons learned from this experience. And my final recommendation is that I, I think that I, we really should, as a community uh, led by the Secretariat, put together uh, some sort of open letter or review document to the conference is the teleconferencing platforms that are servicing the community in this um, uh, trying times to let them know what we have learned and what our needs are in terms of, of the technology. A lot of the things that people have described as challenges for the IGF uh, participation on, on Zoom and things like that are not actually something that uh, was uh, unique to the IGF, is how that technology is set up and designed and it's not that easy to circumvent. So I, I, I really think that Zoom and WebEx and all the others that are working in this space uh, will benefit uh, in the same as us, the same way we approach governments to show uh, policy discussions, recommendations for product improvements will be very welcome. And I, I really encourage the Secretariat to, to uh, move this uh, idea further. Thank you very much, Andrea. And thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sylvia. And Sylvia, thank you for your contribution to the MAG. It was immense and you'll be missed. Um, other MAG members too, but I'm talking to you right now. Um, next we have Valeria Betancourt. Thank you everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Um, and thank you, Andrea and everyone. Let me just start by um, congratulating everyone who has made possible uh, this year to have the, such a successful event 
Um, obviously, the IGF secretary, Atundesa, Mac, and you, and Riet, for your assertive leadership. It's not easy to organize and host an event in this challenging time. So, congratulations for for uh, for that. And I think particularly this year. I think the IGF has demonstrated how relevant and crucial a space it is to, to address pressing and critical internet governance issues. So in that sense, we are very happy to see how this IGF was used to expand debate and to also envisage actions aiming at strengthening the IGF. We were very pleased for that, and we are more committed than ever to keep engaging on those conversations and also to support actions in the future oriented to strengthen the IGF as a very key piece of the UN system, uh, the internet governance and the digital cooperation ecosystem. And uh, obviously as a platform for identifying, identifying viable ways to shape, sustain and strengthen global digital cooperation, particularly in these challenging times. Um, I would like to uh, support and endorse the recommendations by Silvia Cadena, particularly in relation to strengthening the, the environmental track. We are very happy to see the, the development of the discussions under the environmental track. And uh, we also would like to join Silvia and others in calling on to the MAC to maintain this track for the following editions of the IGF. Uh, it is it is very encouraging to see the launching of the pilot the pilot policy network. Uh, we, we see it we see it as a very promising initiative, and we also strongly support the creation of a best practice forum on governance on environmental data. Um, uh, obviously, we can I cannot um, I cannot uh, uh, refrain my, myself from from commenting. Uh, about how important it is to see uh, possibilities ahead to implement the UN Secretary General's roadmap on digital cooperation. We really see it as a very important step to generate increased coordination in relation to tackling of digital issues at the global level and improve governance of the internet. So, uh, and, and we see, as, as I mentioned, the IGF as a key piece on, on, on that uh, ecosystem. And I also, um, something that uh, perhaps um, um, was a kind of gap, I, I would say in the conversations, and maybe I missed them, is some, um, um, some detailed conversation and discussion about the challenges uh, that, um, security experts and human rights defenders are facing currently and how those conditions are ex exacerbated in the middle of the pandemic. The, this wave of global criminalization against digital experts who investigate and develop tools that allow to exercise fundamental human rights in the digital sphere is quite concerning. And we, we, would, we would have liked to see more um, voices speaking up about that situation. So maybe that, that that's a gap that we identify and would like to, to see how the IGF is used to, to call attention and, 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 and to offer uh, the space to address the situation of those experts. Um, and, and, and just let me finish by saying that obviously we will prepare as usual a detailed feedback in relation to the aspects that we believe work well and what we what, what should be improved in the future, some uh, specific recommendations. But for now, let me just finish emphasizing that we are very pleased to see how the, the IGF uh, to, to 2020 encourage greater inclusion of different stakeholders and, and how we use the, the, the technology to come together and mobilize collective intelligence to respond to the, to, the, to the challenges, not only the ones related to the pandemic, but also to the challenges that we have been facing and will keep facing in relation to, um, to the digital age. So thank you, Andrea, and everyone. Um, thanks, Valeria. Um, next, we have Michael Nelson. And please, everyone, I know it's difficult, but do try to be brief. I'm Mike Nelson. I was uh, involved in the World Summit on Information Society and have been involved in the IGF since then and also very involved here in the IGF USA. Those of you who know me know that I was on the MAG about six years ago when I was at Microsoft and Cloudflare and you also know that I can be very disruptive and blunt and also like to tweet. So I'm going to give you about 10 suggestions five seconds at a time. First off, best IGF ever because it was remote. 
you had better people involved and you had a more balanced representation. The only thing that didn't happen is you didn't always get the best people that you could have recruited. You didn't use the virtual ability on some panels. And that's the panel proposer's fault, not yours. First, second point, clone, Chengatai, Anya, everyone else on the, on the secretariat team. Third, experiment more with new formats like debates. We had an amazing brainstorming session that, uh, that uh, Woot helped us and, and, and others worked with. Technical problems uh, in your opening session. Luckily, you had redundant backup, so you could work around it. I, this is the most important issue. You've got to have more panels on emerging technologies and emerging issues. When I was on the MAG, this was a big problem because a lot of people weren't internet experts. And so when a new idea came forward, they didn't know about it. And so it didn't get strong support, but somehow you have to get back to being the place that you go to learn about what's coming next. One other frustration was for those of us who like to talk to people on the side, most of the sessions were using the web in our format for Zoom, not the regular small meeting format. So I couldn't chat with individuals like I, I can here, the way this is set up. I know that's a problem. You have problems with cyberbullying, but there's, there needs to be a way for real time communication. Next thing, it would be great if somebody provided Yelp ratings for the panels, preferably in real time. If there was a way for us to see, okay, there's three things going on. Which one do I wanna go see? And after the fact, I really wanna know what are the five sessions that everybody should watch? I mean, maybe Diplo or somebody can do this. I mean, obviously you can't do it and you can't say that this one's good and that one's bad. Uh, do some work on the schedule, the online schedule. It was very clunky. Often it took three extra steps to get into a session. And I know it's a lot of work, but on the agenda, you should now have the YouTube links so that if if I go to the schedule, I see who's on it, I can click and watch it. Okay, time zones. Uh, I think we need to abolish time zones and I think IGF can do that. Um, seriously, it would be great if we considered doing duplicate sessions. So maybe 12 hours apart, particularly for some of these uh, sessions that were kind of unique and the one of a kind sessions. Another big global problem is that we're getting more and more sessions that are neither internet nor governance. And I think we have to watch it because as if we, if we have mission creep, we end up doing a bunch of panels poorly that other people are doing better. And the last point is uh, a couple points to agree with Woot on more time for Q&A. There should just be a rule that, you know, 15 minutes before the end of the session, it's over. We go to Q&A and more press coverage and the press reporters will like Q&A. The last point is let's not talk about a hybrid. Let's talk about a two-part virtual IGF. 10 days virtual followed by two days in person. We don't have to just meet the needs of the dig haptic the hotel industry, hotel airline, pickpocket, taxi industrial complex. I mean, so much of this need to meet in person is driven by the need to sell hotel rooms in the off season. Let's just make it short, have all the, all the people come together for two days after they've already heard some of the most interesting innovative ideas from the virtual format. So don't say hybrid, that means everybody together at the same time, say two part, and think about doing it that way. I hope I kept it to one minute. Thank you very much. All my comments are in the are in the plot are in the chat. <laughs> thanks, 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 Michael. Um, before I hand on to the next person, I just wanted to comment. I see that someone has written in the chat that they feel some of the input they gave during sessions were not reflected in the messages. Um, I think where you need to look is at the session report. So remember what happens is that 
The session organizer compiles a session report, and then based on the session report, the secretariat compiles the output documents. And that is precisely why we've introduced a new innovation this year, which is to allow people to comment on the session reports. So if you feel your contribution has not been reflected in the session report, that is why we're giving people that um, chance to comment until 4 December on the session report. Sorry, I just wanted to flag that because it came up in the chat. And next we have, I have lost control of my speaker queue, Elisabeth. Elisabeth, you have the phone. Thank you, Henriette. I was just trying to unmute myself as we often do in these settings. Uh, this is Elisabeth Schaumann speaking. I'm with the German Informatics Society. Last year in Berlin, we organized the Youth IGF Summit. And this year we uh, had a project called Youth for Digital Sustainability that kind of brought young people in mostly on the topic of sustainability. So I saw a comment in the chat regarding youth uh, feedback and youth voices. So I thought I'd step up um, with that background. Um, and I want to briefly comment on some things that I saw that are mostly positive. So uh, this year we really saw youth representatives in the high level discussions and in many workshops. This is an effect of what has been done years before and is now coming to fruition. And um, also the Youth IGF Summit was a format that was picked up this year by the, by the uh, IGF Secretariat and will be picked up um, by the Polish hosts um, next year. So this is a really good momentum that we need to keep up and really uh, put forward again and again, um, even after the 2021 IGF is over and uh, really carry that forward to the next host and also potential um, virtual meetings in the future. Um, feedback that I got from some of the young people in my network and in the uh, in the you know the newcomers that we wanted to engage is that they found relatively challenging in terms of the format um, to participate and as we all know it is in a virtual setting it is harder to get young and new people in when they don't know anyone and they are not used to the, the structure but logistically of course it was easier to involve uh, new people and also people from marginalized groups and people from places that couldn't easily travel. So this was a good thing, just one more point on the format. I think when we go more virtual, we need to just rethink formats because interaction is different. Uh, I think that has been touched upon also by people that came before me and spoke before me. And I really hope that we can build on the learnings of this year to kind of progress format wise as well. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot, Elizabeth. I have a question. I hope you didn't answer it because I was looking at the chat. Chats are very powerful, but they can also be very distracting. Um, how did you feel um, about having the youth session in parallel to, to other IGF sessions? When we had an informal open mic last week, some people from the youth track said they felt that they would have preferred not to have to choose between the youth track and the main IGF. So what are, what are your reflections on that? You are muted, I think. Yes, now I can speak again. Um, from my experience, always it makes sense to not single out uh, youth tracks that are in parallel to what is going on to um, really ensure full participation. Um, it always makes sense to kind of do this kind of capacity building beforehand um, or maybe in the off hours um, but this is kind of hard when everyone is in different time zones but so I would say in an ideal setting we could get the youth involvement before um, the, the start of the main um, of the main sessions and workshops and the, the program of the IGF. Thanks a lot, Elizabeth. And I, I know that Anya will be working with that, that input and with everyone else. Next, we have um, Michael Ogia. Hi. Uh, hi, Henriette. Thank you very much. 
for having me. My name is Michael Ogia. I am uh, I work with the organization with an organization called the Global Forum for Media Development, and I'm part of which is the Secretariat of the Dynamic Coalition on the Sustainability of Journalism and News Media, the DC Sustainability. That's one hat. The other hat is that I'm a steering committee member for the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition, another DC. Um, so some of the, the the really good things to highlight, first of all, absolutely thank you to all of the incredible work and planning that went into this um, to make it a success. Um, of course, for me personally, I've been advocating for years to add sustainability in terms of the environment and the environmental track to, to our work. So to have this finally realized has been an incredibly validating and, and just just inc really wonderful um, experience for me. And so thank you to, to everybody on this call, to all the people in the community and to everybody um, who supported that. It really means a lot and it was such a successful track as well. So I really encourage us to keep incorporating this going forward. Um, of course, one of, the, one of the best things about this was being able to engage with people that would have otherwise not been able to attend. That was the case, for instance, one of, one of, uh, one of the speakers for, uh, at the, uh, at, at the uh, workshop that I uh, co-organized, that I moderated. Um, she's Chilean and she's wonderful, but she wouldn't have been able to make it otherwise. So obviously this presents a lot of good opportunities. Um, having said that, you know, this was very much not only just the, an experiment, but it was also happening at a time when we're all experimenting with something new. We, you know, in this, the whole of 2020 is, is different. So if we were to do something virtual in the future, whether it's hybrid or something else or whatever, um, I would like to think that it would be situated within a very different social and, and, and political experience that we've had this year. But having said that, I was exhausted this year. I mean, it was exhausting. And uh, on top of the fact that there's time zone issues, which of course I'm in, uh, I'm in Southeastern Europe, so it's quite easy for me, but you know, we have our, our, our daily work schedules on top of everything. And while that's typically the true at the IGF normally, it also means that we have uh, time to take off. I, you know, I wasn't going to take off for two and a half weeks to try and be engaged in everything. Having said that, um, I agree with what's been said about the webinar format. This kind of didn't feel like an IGF at times. It felt like a series of webinars where I was going in and I would listen to people, but maybe one or two people would ask a question and then it would end. There, it, it wasn't really a discussion. It was very top down. Um, I, uh, there was a lot of overlap between many of the sessions. I think it, you know, I, Yuta and, and I and, and everyone at the DC um, uh, coordination group, we talked about this on Monday. I understand that um, why it may be problematic or lack of diversity, but to me, it, it may have been more um, useful to have, well, potentially to have combined sessions where we have one topic and we, we focus on that. But then I also recognize that then that, that also makes time zones, uh, you know, time, respecting time zones harder as well. Um, so yeah, there's never gonna be a, maybe there may not be a perfect solution, but there, if there is one, I think it's one that should be data-driven and best practice driven. Um, and I just think in general, I, I wanna really um, encourage us all to remember that we cannot treat offline and online like they're the same thing. I mean, there's just a limited amount of energy and space, especially after everything. We're all zoomed out and all this thing. And, and bear in mind, I'm not criticizing the MAG in this. They made this decision as well when they did, at a time when they did. And I, I think that it was the right thing. I, will, I think it was the right thing going forward. At the same time, I really, really encourage us to not just simply replicate this. And if we do something online like this again, which I do think is a very good idea, we have to remember that just attending a session as a metric of engagement is not really enough. I recognize that quantitatively speaking, it looks great. Qualitatively speaking, it's to me, it's quite lacking because, and I often uh, felt that as well, not just with the IGF, but many of the the events that have happened this year. It's just felt like all this work has gone into it, but then you get none of the release, none of the none of the fun, none of the networking or very limited experiences of that. And 
frankly, it's draining. It's, it's so just demoralizing in certain ways. It's not just about showing up and being there, which I recognize, again, to agree with what Michael Nelson said, I agree. We don't need to just be funneling, fun, funding the taxi, airplane, air, you know, air, uh, hotel industries, fair enough. At the same time, let's not forget that it, it is part of uh, the, that human yeah. social element also kind of makes a lot of what this is worthwhile and, and, and part of why it's so fulfilling and rewarding. So I really just encourage us to consider that going forward. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, thanks for Michael. Work. No, that's all very, very valuable input. I, I would say that we did not spend enough time on planning the networking sessions. We, we had networking sessions, but I think that human component, I also feel that's why so many people were, and I think Michael Nelson said that, that's why the webinar format was so difficult because it's, it's so, it was so inhuman. You make this effort to participate in a session and then no one can even see that you are there. You know, I, I, I do think we need to find ways of retaining that sense of just affirming the effort that people are making to be at this event. Um, but I think your point about data, I just want to flag that as well. The MAG has discussed that as well. Looking at our evaluating sessions and after session evaluations, just getting more data more quickly um, that we can use in planning and give to, to organizers. Anyway, I'm speaking too much. Um, next we have, um, there's so much going on in the chat. I can't see my notes. Who's next? I think it is Tamea. Tamea, you have. Thank you very much, Andreette. Um, I'm sorry, I was finding my mute button way too slowly. Um, my name is Timur Shuto. I'm an outgoing MAG member um, from the business community, and I'm managing the International Chamber of Commerce's basis initiative as my as my day job. Um, first of all, I want to echo Sylvia's thanks um, to you and Riyadh for your leadership um, and um, Mike Nelson's call to clone the staff at the Secretariat, um, and also to add a huge thanks to my fellow MAG members uh, for all of your dedication. Um, some uh, persevered through connectivity challenges and political upheavals and personal and family issues. It was really a truly amazing work throughout this year by, by all of you. Um, I have four points to make um, and I try to keep it brief because I'm conscious that we're running out of time. First, uh, on participation. Um, and we can see this in the numbers um, Chengatai presented. Um, there was an unprecedented level of registrations this year. Um, most of those were newcomers, um, and it's important to note, um, and very diverse um, roster of participants. Um, and I say this not just in regions, but I think it's also important to add the diversity in the sectors of the economy um, and the fields of activity of, um, of international organizations that were, that were present with us throughout the past few weeks. This is a great testament, I think, to the convening power uh, of the IGF. Um, and there is great opportunity in front of us to continue building on this, um, keep the newcomers engaged and, and have them contribute to, to contribute to our work um, throughout the year. Um, second point uh, regarding the outputs and the communication. Um, what I was also very impressed with um, is to see again for a second year in a row um, the level of near, near real time reporting coming out of the Secretariat and the capturing and sharing of the different types of outputs. I am very encouraged to hear Chengatai talking about the promotion of these outputs um, and the targeted outreach to organizations working um, on the topics the IGF was focusing on this year. I hope that this very valuable content that was produced can also be used to feed communication efforts about the IGF throughout the coming year um, to keep the community engaged and aware and to create momentum for the next annual meeting. Um, and I think this is especially relevant for social media. Um, third, uh, on the technical um, setup and technical issues, um, I want to echo all the praise that others have noted. Um, what I would particularly like to highlight here is um, what I think worked really well was the ability to follow sessions live on YouTube um, and then to have those recordings ready the minute the session was finished. Um, so people could look back, rewind, fast forward um, to see again intervention they were particularly interested in. Uh, and I do hope this can be retained for whatever hybrid or dual or other format um, the IGF will consider um, for next year's. 
and to to Michael's point, um, just speaking before me, I I do agree. We need to make sure that the organization is done from the user user experience point of view, um, going forward um, regarding you know registration systems, interpretation opportunities for networking, all of that. And the last point I'd like to make. Um, is more on the substance front. Um, on one hand, um, I want to repeat what we said last year, streamlining the IGF agenda into a few tracks um, and following that structure with community sessions, main sessions, high levels, um, works really well. Um, and I think we do should continue in, in this way. Um, and on the other hand, the sessions throughout um, really highlighted, and this is apparent from uh, all the messages that the Secretariat produced, that the way forward um, from COVID and the rebuild um, is digital. It is multi-stakeholder. It is collaborative, open, and inclusive. Um, and what is most encouraging that these messages are resonating profoundly um, outside of the IGF bubble, um, from UN and other intergovernmental organizations to national governments, to businesses and civil society organizations. We hear this messages coming um, uh, over and over again. And I think that is the biggest compliment to the IGF's mission and the activity over the past 15 years, um, and the greatest proof of why we need this space for an open and candid and inclusive conversation. So I would like to end on that point and thank you um, everyone for, for really a tremendous few weeks. I was muted, sorry. Thanks a lot, Tamea. And next we have Jochen and then Bruna. Tamea, also just thank you very much for all your hard work on the MAG. Tamea is another outgoing MAG member. Hello, thank you for giving me the floor. My name is Jochen Michels. I'm working with Kaspersky. Kaspersky is an international cybersecurity company. So we are from the private sector. And it was the first time that we attended in the IGF, both in the intercessional work and also um, in the event. And it was a great experience uh, for us. First of all, congratulations to that work. I'm based in Germany. I forgot to inform you about that. I'm based in Germany. Um, what we saw was that there was a very good representation of attendees and also speakers with regards to region, gender, and the different stakeholder groups. And that was very important. And one reason from our point of view for that was uh, that this year's IGF was a virtual IGF. And a lot of different persons had the possibility to attend. Also, there were some technical issues. We sent an email already to the IGF secretary and made some suggestions for improvement in that, in that regard. What we think was very good was uh, the um, four them uh, thematic tr tracks fits very well. There was a good interconnection between that uh, thematic tracks. And um, what we think, what could be a good approach? Michael Nelson mentioned that, um, and also to Mia in, in, in her um, uh, uh, brief uh, speech. Um, we think it's important to and IGF does that, but it's more important in the future when we have, for example, a hybrid event or an event with two different, uh, different phases. It is very important to put the people in the center of the IGF. And people have different interests, they're different in the way they work. So perhaps some people are more interested to attend online, others are interested to, to attend in an on-site meeting. And therefore, the um, suggestion by Michael doing a two-phase IGF could be a very appropriate way to do so. And the second uh, point is, from our point of view, it's good to make it as easy as, and as simple to assess all the sessions. May it be online or, or offline. And when it comes to online, uh, there will be some, or we think it's necessary to make some improvements with the registration process and also the usability of the IGF website, but we have heard that a new website will be established in uh, January uh, next year. And what we liked very much was that both the uh, Secretariat and the MAC was very open to new ideas, um, very supportive and um, yes, very good communication. And that shows that that is a real uh, multi-stakeholder approach and uh, session. Thank you very much. 
Thanks very much, Jochen. And Laura O'Brien, I'm giving you the floor next because you have to leave. Great, thank you very much, Henriette. And hi, everyone, my name is Laura O'Brien. I'm the UN Advocacy Officer at Access Now. I'm delivering the statement on behalf of Access Now, APC, Global Partners Digital, and the Internet Governance Caucus. Uh, first, we want to commend the IGF Secretariat, the MAG, uh, for a very successful uh, virtual IGF. As has been noted routinely today, we are at a very critical moment. There are more people dependent on digital technology, but also more pervasive surveillance, more fragmentation, lots of challenges, but clearly there's lots of opportunities as we saw what can be achieved and what is being done through these digital platforms. And the IGF remains an essential place to continue work on multi-stakeholder discussions and cooperation. Uh, to this end, we wanna briefly highlight um, what we've already communicated in several outputs during this session, which were really beneficial. The first was a letter of intent from 10 NGOs to engage in the implementation of the SG's roadmap and to share a position paper. Uh, the position paper was on the Tech Envoy and it was endorsed by almost 100 NGOs, uh, which included a variety of recommendations. And then third, the Internet Governance Caucus, which is a network and space for civil society within the Internet Governance ecosystem, in particular sent a letter to support the MAG Working Group on strengthening and strategy response to the options paper. Uh, we also developed an input for the session on the roadmap for digital cooperation, which, which really focused well on the role of IGF. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have time to deliver at this high level session, uh, but we will publish our statement in written form soon. In the meantime, we just wanted to provide and emphasize uh, five quick points. Uh, first is um, to collectively accelerate digital cooperation and establish a more robust multi-stakeholder consultation on specific reforms to IGF. We want to ensure that any new structures build on the success stories and the outcomes that have achieved over the years and that IGF's bottom-up and open nature is still maintained. Uh, we also request that the IGF Secretariat and the MEG make best efforts to ensure that future IGF modalities don't overlap with other key multi-stakeholder UN forums, uh, such as the UN Forum on Business and Human Rights. Uh, we want this to ensure that all stakeholders can engage in advanced digital cooperation across relevant UN fora. Uh, the second point is to ensure that all stakeholders working together to improve regional participation, particularly in the Global South, uh, on this point, we recommend specifically conducting impact assessments on civil society participation, in particular before finalizing the IGF program uh, to ensure that civil society uh, space is not limited by different modalities and that participation in host countries respects uh, freedom of expression, association and assembly. Uh, third, we want to commend and welcome the IGF 2020 call for voluntary commitments uh, and encourage participation from all stakeholder groups to use this existing initiative to make a commitment to advanced digital cooperation. Uh, fourth, we recommend installing dedicated communications and financing structures with a clear role and dedication to fundraise for the new IGF model. Uh, the communication structure would be vital to better identify and publicize IGF story, uh, success stories and outcomes. And then last but certainly not least, um, gender balance needs to be ensured across all sessions and gender equality needs to be a guiding principle in the planning of the IGF meeting. There is still a need to strengthen the participation of, of women and gender diverse community in the forum and to have uh, gender discussions in a more prominent and intersessional manner. Uh, those are all our points. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot, Laura. In fact, the gender report card is something that MAG brought up at its own um, debrief yesterday. Um, I'm now going to give the floor to Jorge, and I'm going to hand chairing over to Shengatai. Jorge, you have the floor. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you hear me okay. I was a bit surprised because I, I thought that Bruna was coming before me, but I'll try to, to be brief. Um, first of she all, put her hand down. she put her hand down and you can trust us. I promise we won't overlook <laughs> anyone. Well, we'll sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm Jorge Gancia. I work for the Swiss government, uh, been around for uh, too many years, I guess. Um, first, I would like to join uh, 
all the uh, congratulations to the IGF Secretariat, to all the teams from UNDESA, from the MAC, from you, you yourself, Andriette, who did a, a great job. Uh, we know what this means uh, because we had the, uh, the chance to uh, host uh, an IGF three years ago, which now uh, looks, uh, feels like uh, an etern in eternity. Uh, I would uh, join many uh, of the comments regarding the uh, low degree of interactivity of the webinar format, uh, which is, uh, as some said, a problem, especially for new voices and newcomers who uh, see it more difficult to participate and to be seen and be visible in such a format. But I think uh, we, we can uh, work on this. On a more political level, I think that uh, having this IJF in a virtual format and uh, with uh, the, the support, uh, as I heard uh, from the Polish uh, government, even if uh, the, the IGF, the face-to-face -face meeting was transferred to 2021, sends a very um, strong signal that the IGF is able, is uh, resilient to react in uh, such difficult circumstances. Uh, just by doing the IGF and by being so uh, successful in terms of participation and also in terms of uh, the topics, because we were able to, uh, we as the IGF community, to put COVID-19 very high on the agenda. Of course, as many said, uh, we are very happy that uh, the intersection between environment and uh, digital uh, finally made it to the top of the agenda. I think that uh, another great innovation was the whole we the internet process where we had the chance to uh, uh, hear about the opinions from hundreds or thousands of uh, ordinary citizens from all around the world about key issues of uh, internet governance and uh, I think we can institutionalize this and connect this uh, kind of uh, dialogue with ordinary citizens with the main tracks of the IGF. Uh, I think uh, that uh, regarding the visibility of the process beyond our IGF bubble, there is still room for improvement. I also um, I saw the article from The Economist, but it's uh, one of the very few that has mentioned the IGF recently. There we have still a lot of uh, work to do to, to bridge um, uh, the gap to the newsrooms, to, to bridge the, the gap to the decision-making um, levels. And uh, finally, uh, I would say that uh, on the overlap of sessions, we should also continue to work on an issue-based uh, or an issue-driven uh, model of workshops and sessions instead of a more initiator or um, uh, ownership-driven uh, model, which uh, I think we have today. And just a, a learning I think we, we have been seeing also in, in the ICANN world is, uh, I think that Michael Orgia mentioned this uh, a bit, is that uh, too many hours in a one day uh, in a digital setting is really exhausting. So there at least in, in ICANN, we are uh, more or less uh, coming to the conclusion that four full hours a day of Zoom meetings, of intensive Zoom meetings is more than enough. So sometimes less is more. But uh, uh, again, to go back to, to the beginning, I think uh, this has been a very strong signal that the IGF is resilient, that the IGF is ready to grow and to uh, ev evolve further to a uh, really strong IGF plus. And I hope that we can all together implement the, the roadmap. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jorge. And um, again, thank you for your 
long-standing commitment, you yourself personally, and also that of the uh, Swiss government to the IGF. And um, as most of you know, we work together as well um, for the 2017 IGF that was in Geneva. So um, thank you, Jorge. Um, next on the list, I do have Roberto. Roberto, please. Thank you very much, Shengetai uh, and Riet, and good uh, morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. I'm Roberto Zambrana. I am uh, from the Bolivian IGF and also uh, a first year MAC member. First of all, as my other colleagues, I want to thank the secretary for this successful IGF uh, to congratulate all of them, of course, and all the, the people that was involved in this successful IGF. I also want to thank and uh, not say goodbye, but uh, maybe we will see in some other stages to our fellow colleagues that are leaving the, uh, the MAC. I think we all benefit with their wisdom, with their experience. I'm really, particularly, I'm really, really uh, thankful for that. Um, about uh, my comments regarding, I, I also support most of the ideas and proposals from other colleagues. I just want to share two other reflections. First, the, the virtual IGF brought very great comments because to, of the attendance, but particularly because of active participation through chat. And in some cases, when participants were invited to take the floor using the microphone, chat participation was very engaging because it provoked a very active parallel, but mostly complementary discussion. Actually, chat participation was even more active than uh, Q&A section. And, and I think this is the same reason why webinar format was so rejected. At second, based on, on, on this, uh, the main difference with face-to-face uh, -face is that when we participate on site, we are mostly listening to panelists and perhaps make some comments with the one or two colleagues that are sitting with us or next to us. But of course, none of our real time comments is shared with the audience or uh, to, to the panelists. But in virtual IGF, those comments are shared with all of them. And I think that fact is the main attraction for engagement and also for being so decided to keep this kind of active participation in the future. But we need to think that in, it may not be a problem with the face-to-face -face or virtual discussion or approaches, but with the session formats that we really need to reflect on and come up with other creative and more participating formats. And uh, that will be my main suggestion actually. And also I support the idea of having two faces, but not because we need to have room for both approaches, face-to-face -face and, and virtual, but because we need to increase the exchange and the dialogue time and also to strengthen both approaches. Thank you very much. Those were my comments. Uh, thank you, Roberto, um, for, for your comments. And for the MAG, MAG members who are leaving the MAG, I hope they do, and I'm sure they do understand they're not leaving the IGF. It's just a turnover of the MAG, and we do expect them to be um, quite active um, in the IGF process, as Michael Nelson is. <laughs> thank you. Um, I don't see any other hands up, uh, so let me give it a six count, um, just to take a phrase from Lynn, uh, to see if there's anybody else who wants to make, oh yes, Judith, please, yes. Yes, hi, it's Judith Help. Hmm. Uh, Judith, you're muted again for some reason. Unmute. Ugh, some ways. Okay. It's Judith Halstein. Thanks again for the great comments. And I want to second what Sylvia and others said um, about uh, more captioning and especially more captioning for the day zero events. It was a very confusing um, session because usually day zero just one day, but now we had day zero events on all of them. But I think everyone considered them as part of the IGF. And so they thought that they would be the same, um, 
level of services so that they would have the captioning and they would have other other services there and it wasn't i think that was confusing for people um and i do understand the idea i also i think um from the people i knew that they didn't understand that they that they could have had a choice between meeting and webinar until it was too late. And so that's why they were put into the webinar and their solution was to make everyone panelists, which works, but doesn't, you know. Um, and so maybe we could figure out some kind of happy medium or now that people know that they have to be in big, bold writing. You need to choose, the chair needs to choose their the meeting thing and i think they just didn't know that they could do that um i think we do need to figure out how to do a better networking room but i, I also understand that the cost involved in trying out one of those other platforms is also very expensive so maybe if we do this again we should look at trying to figure out how we could do some virtual ones um as for the uh, other ones, and I, I, I saw the comment that Paul made, and I think about the the YouTube matching, um, and that's something that maybe DK could also put on his list is that the YouTube, what we do when um, our tech person, Jolly McPhee does it, is that he makes sure that he is having the signer and the interpreter on the, um, I guess I have video, but no, so the sign on needs to have the uh, faces in the um, needs to have the faces. Uh, here's my picture. Needs to have the faces in the uh, in the in the in the screen, so that way they could um, be seen on the YouTube. Because otherwise, I think what Paul was mentioning is that when they had the sign language interpretation in their session, it wasn't picked up. Um, and so uh, we've had to figure out a better way. And, um, and I think what someone said before that the, the, the only reason why we had this convoluted scheduling was to about the security and the Zoom bombing, but we're not gonna have that issue with YouTube. So there's no reason to put the YouTube behind the security block. So that way people can view the schedule without registering. And I think I think maybe Mike others mentioned that that way you could uh, see what the programs are and then they'll say, oh, well, yes, if I want to join, I need to register. And then you would have that because the, the YouTube people are extra and they're not, yes, there is a possibility to um, zoom bomb the YouTube chat, but that's often not done, but it is possible. Um, yes, I like Ripe's facial chat, but I think someone said that that's limited to a certain number of people. And also that may be more expensive. And then the question is, where do we put the money that we have? Do we put the money we have in more captioning or do we put money we have in some kind of other system, networking system and it's just a limited priority of where you put your money um the going with the sign it when you have a sign language as we found on dcad when we have the sign language interpretation where you were using international sign which is twice the price of regular sign language so that brings up the expenses really high too. So there's a whole mixture, I think, of different contributions, but I think this is, was great. Um, so I just would add that um, to my comments. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you very much, Judith. And I think you've in encapsulated the um, the things that we do struggle with every day here at the Secretariat. We have a limited, and also with the host country, we have a limited budget. And where exactly do we put that money for the most um, effect? Um, and that's an ongoing thing. And um, but we do, we really do take. Um, 
the needs of um, people with disabilities um, very, very seriously. And as you know, we've had great collaboration with um, the DCAD and uh, we will continue to do that. And we'll try and fix that, uh, the sign language thing. Hopefully we won't have the same sort of circumstances that we have had this year, but still going on forward. If we do have sign language, even if we have face-to-face uh, -face hybrid or you know two-stage IGF meeting, we'll see how um, we can do that and get it done. Um, straight, as we said, you know, we are, we are we we are a learning organization, and we do want to continue. Uh, just one comment on the day zero. Um, the day zero, historically speaking, did come about because when we went to a um, meeting venue, it was stipulated in the host country agreement that you know um, the rooms should be ready two days before the meeting. So the things were there as such, the physical things were there, and there was still just the testing of the um, network, um, the streaming, and etc. And then the decision was made that instead of letting all this infrastructure go to waste for a day, um, we would let other people, um, the, the community, to, to come in and use it. That's why we had um, these events such as the academic network um, and other um, sessions that may not quite strictly um, conform to the requirements of the IGF, and that's why we called it pre-events. But of course, of course, there had to be a, a, um, IGF related. And so hence, that is why the pre-events, as you probably notice, that the session requirements are not as stringent as you would get for a workshop, a best practice forum, or an um, open forum. And um, we do stipulate that um, we don't guarantee anything. Uh, we don't guarantee the, the network, we don't guarantee the streaming, or, and we don't guarantee the um, transcription. Though, yes, in other IGFs, depending um, if we have the transcription team there, they have arrived three days before, then of course we do use them. Um, online, of course, it's a little bit um, different because there is no wasted space as or wasted time as such and therefore it's a decision whether or not we want to spend more money on um, transcription because it is an added cost when it is on site the transcribers are there so whether we use them or not we still pay for them so might as well um, use them um, uh, so yes uh, we, we do have to um, kind of um, look at the day zero again and see um, what we can do. But that's just the his historical um, effects uh, dealing with the day zero. Um, sorry, I might have, um, I think it was Marco. Marco, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Shengtai, and, and uh, good, good afternoon, good morning, evening, colleagues. Um, yeah, now um, a lot of valuable comments here, Mike, and, and and of course also related to the last discussion. We have to we have to work with the technical constraints that we have, especially in in the fully virtual meetings like this. Um, I saw some comments about like using spatial chat. I think we also have to be very conscious about the fact that not everybody is in such a privileged position and has enough bandwidth to use these kind of fancy tools. Uh, but the one point I would like to reiterate, and many speakers before me have made it already, is that I very much appreciate sort of the more open format of this session over um, the, the, the standard webinar format, I think especially with smaller groups and for instance, dynamic coalitions, it helps a lot if, if just sort of more people can be there and actually show their face and, and see who else is there. In, in sessions, that's what I really miss is the fact that you have no idea who else is in the room. That that and and for future editions, be it fully virtual, hopefully not. Hopefully we can meet again and face to face. But I like to sort of preserve that as 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 a takeaway is these kind of meetings like we now have with 104 people in the same room where we can all see each other helps a lot. And, and I like to go on the record for that. But uh, that's all I have to say here. Thank you.
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Marco. I hope you can hear me. Yes, you can. Uh, thank you very much, Marco, uh, for that input. I'm sorry if I'm not saying this in order, uh, but the next person on my list is Abidal Dejalil, and then we have uh, Mauricia, okay. and then Veronica. Okay. Okay. Merci beaucoup de m'avoir accordé la parole. Donc avant Thank you very to... much for giving me the floor. First of all, prior to thanking the Secretariat for the success of this event, I would like to say that this is the first event we are organizing online. So I would like to congratulate them on this. And I would also like to say that you, you are accompanying the developing countries and we are also appreciating your help. Concerning the time zones, I think that the European time zones are a very good thing. We, we see also some problems with the agenda, the navigation on the web, but mainly about the agenda. And I received a lot of feedback from the community in order to register and to participate in the sessions because there is a double check prior to get the link. So, so, of course, like this, we can avoid some problems, but it was more complicated. So first personal agenda, then press the button, etc. Well, it was complicated for some people. So we need to think over the strategy of validating and the effort on interpreting. Uh, well, we have uh, here in Chad French speaking people and many main and high level sessions were in French and there was interpreting into Spanish and to English. It was a good thing. And this effort should be maintained also during other sessions to get the interpreting so that the society can get involved on that. So I think that the format was a very simple one and easy to understand for the NRIs and other sessions too. Once again, thank you to the IGF secretary and to Marx, and thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I'm closing the list after Olivia because I think um, we're almost up in on time. Um, so the next person is um, Mauricia. I hope I'm saying your name right. Yeah. Yes, thank you. That was said perfectly. Uh, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, everyone on the call. I would, uh, well, I can start my video, but I am also a mom of one, so newborn, so if I need to grab him, I'll need to do that quickly as well. Uh, I'll be second in my point. Uh, with regards to the youth inclusion on panels that I mentioned in the chat, I just wanted to emphasize that um, for the to reach the goal of inclusion and diversity, on the panels, and it's also obviously to improve our IGFs going forward, it would be important to include more youth on main session panels. And if, for example, Sylvia mentioned, um, many people do not complete their profiles and list themselves as um, resource persons. If there is a lack of that, I do have a solution. We have groups such as the YSIG, which is the Youth um, Coalition of Internet Governance. We have the Digital Grassroots, and we also have ISOC Youth Ambassadors who um, participate in the IGFs every year. Uh, we are active groups, and we are open to being part of um, the main sessions, and we are excited to be part of the main sessions. We have a lot to contribute and to obviously build on that. So please do make use of those groups to reach out to us uh, as youth and so that we can improve uh, diversity within the IGF. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, that, that that is high up on our agenda. Uh, this year, we did manage to get a youth representative in the opening and closing session. But of course, that is not enough. Um, they should also be represented in, in the other sessions. So yes, with the resource people, resource persons, etc. That's a, a very good idea. Okay, um, Veronica, please, um, if you could make it short and succinct. Yes, thank you. Um, I actually, I wanted to jump on what Mauricia just said. And okay. 
and um, actually, actually about the youth participation at the IGF, especially because um, as youth um, as youth ambassador, we also prepare for months for this IGF. I was a bit disappointed that many of the panel were a youth dedicated like was a bit compartmentalized uh, the youth participation at the IGF and I totally agree with Maurice that maybe you should be brought in mainstream panels especially because some of us as most of us are also young experts uh, in specific fields and many of the stakeholders know us um and know how it work thank you uh, sorry um olivia you have the final word um uh, please thank you very much Shangatai. olivia kepana blanc speaking and i'm going to speak just on uh, uh, as the the so-called manager or convener for GEMS, the Global Equal Multi-Stakeholder Band. And I wanted to thank you, Chengatai, for trying your best to try and get the band to, to be able to play online. Um, unfortunately, technology is such that uh, it's impossible to coordinate so many different band members from so many different places around the world. And so I'm really hoping that uh, either the technology in the next 12 months gets uh, developed so that it actually works and we're able to bring this over to, to the community of, or of course that we can play in person at the next IGF. Um, and um, that's all. So thank you again. And plus one to everything that's been said before on a, on a more uh, um, formal note. So thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Olivia. Um next year we, we will do it yes <laughs> thanks okay uh, that brings us to the end of the um open mic session uh thank you very much for all your inputs uh we have taken note of them and there's a recording and also the transcripts so we will go back comb through it and get everything um we will also um do our general call for inputs um and so for because we know especially for governments they do prefer to have um, written inputs uh, and so we will um, pu publish that on the website and give you time to send us um, those written inputs um <clears throat> now just looking ahead um for next year as well. Um, apart from the call for written inputs, we will also be issuing a call for um, issues um, for the uh, 2021 cycle. As you all know, uh, we are going to, um, it, it's going to, it's scheduled to be in Poland. And these, the dates for this is 6th to 10th of December, 2021. So we do have a year um, to uh, really um, plan it. And um, we have the new mag has been announced and Henriette is going to continue to be the highly effective um, chair that she has been in uh, 2020. Uh, and um, we do plan also to have the first open consultations and mag meeting for the end of february because we do want to have those inputs um, come in um, uh, that, that i've mentioned um, the written inputs and also for issues and then the secretary is going to tabulate them um, send them back and then when we do have our um, <clears throat> open consultations and mag meeting, we can be prepared and make it a, a real worthwhile meeting. Unfortunately, I, given the current situation, I have, I don't think there is any chance that it's going to be um, face to face. And we are going to have to look maybe the meetings. I mean, this is just my determination at the moment. Uh, maybe we'll revisit um, whether or not we'll have face to face meetings um, in June onwards. Um, but at the moment, we are planning for the first meeting to be um, a virtual meeting as well. 
Um, let me just give it to Henriette quickly for any um, final words. Henriette, please. Mm. Why does this unmute button not want <laughs> yes. to work? I think it's tired. Mm -hmm. And there's some questions in the chat about um, confirming that it will be a face-to-face -face event. I mean, we'll do that in the course of the year. I just want to thank everyone very much again. I mean, the, the Secretariat, mm -hmm. you've been thanked before, but it was a phenomenal effort. I'm not sure if everyone that's, that's in this call is aware that the Secretariat this year also did the bulk of the work to organize the high level sessions. So they had the double duty of, of supporting the IGF, it being a virtual IGF, as well as being the lead organizers of the, of the virtual IGF. Thanks also to the team in, in New York, UN Dessa, who provides the back end and so much support for the IGF. And then a special thank you to the outgoing MAG members. Um, a lot of MAG members have come to, to, to the end of their term. And I just want to thank them for, for their work, their contribution, but also for their legacy. They've left a legacy in terms of, of systems and procedures and of documentation that we'll be building on. And um, the new MAG members, welcome to all of you. And as you would have seen from the session, there's, there's accountability to, to the IGF community. They do watch us, they give us feedback, but they also give us huge amount of support. So, so, so looking forward to everyone um, working with us um, on the next IGF with our host country, Poland. They are also on the call. And um, so a special thank you to them for, for having been with us in this year and for everything they will do next year. That's it from me, Shangatai. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. And thank you all. A very special thank you to the participants as well, because um, this is what makes the IGF. Thank you.